In this section, we are going to be covering several different special layups. The first one will be a shear web. Mike will explain to you uh, how we do this, the shear web, which might be inside of a flying surface such as a wing. Okay, what we have here is a, a simulated section of a main wing on a long easy, or even the canard on a long easy. It's done the same way. This is depicting a C spar. And we have the, this is the body of the wing, the cutout for the spar, the spar caps will later on run in these troughs on either side of, of this here. Coming across the top of this in the shape of a U or a C will be the shear whip, which is generally two to four to six plies of, of unidirectional glass that cross each other to tie the two spar caps together in shear. We've, we've prepared this piece of foam by slurring it in the area that we're gonna do the, the shear web layup, and we've also protected the rest of the wing with gray tape or, or duct tape so that when we're doing this layup here, we don't spill epoxy onto the foam below, or, or which will be the top and bottom surface of the wing. Just for demonstration purposes so that you'll be able to see it, we've shown the fiber orientation of the cloth on the, uh, with, with ink marks. It's not a good idea to do that uh, because the ink uh, disrupts the uh, uh, performance of the epoxy. But notice it goes 45 degrees, it's a little bit more there, isn't it? You go 45 degrees across the shear web face. And also 45 degrees down this face. And as on the other layups, the wrinkles must be pulled out straight. And the straightness of the fibers are really important in the shear whip. You're taking tremendous loads in a shear whip. And the glass cannot take the load unless it's straight. <coughs> Notice we made the glass quite a bit too long. And now we'll just scissor trim it. It's okay for it to be a little bit short. If it's too long there, it will build up into the corner and cause a, a disruption that'll be hard to, uh, it'll get in the way of the spar cap. Get some epoxy in this. If you just take your finger and run it into the corner, it'll crease the glass, and you can pull it away and cut just short of the crease. It's better to be a little short than to be, to fill this. You do not want the glass to run up, up into that little corner. You can be as much as a half inch short without any problem at all. On a shear web that's made from unidirectional cloth, each alternative layer is crossed at 45 degrees to the last one. Notice now this, this supply will be exactly 45 degrees, roughly 45 degrees orientation relative to the first ply. And it'll be applied and scissor trimmed just like the first one was. I may have said 45 degrees to each other. I meant 45 degrees to the axis of the shear web or the axis of the spar cap. Actually, they're closer to 90 degrees to each other. The importance is that each alternate layer cross. Now, of course, being a shear web, it'll eventually get glued to something else here, and eventually the spar cap will be glued to it here. So after the layup is perfect, you're going to want to go along and peel ply the entire piece. And that's all there is to a shear web. The next specialized layup we want to show you is the spar caps. Spar caps in these airplanes are generally made from unidirectional e-glass, and it comes on long rolls. In this case, it's a, about a 25,000 thick, 3-inch wide unidirectional tape. It's relatively heavy compared to the cloth that we use and requires more patience in wetting it out. And we'll show you a special technique that we use in doing that. And we built a simulated shear web here. And we're gonna be laying several plies of the spar cap. Of course, the orientation of the fibers is this way. And they're tied together by some very small fibers in the uh, uh, lateral direction. So we generally paint a liberal coat of epoxy down onto the shear web, just a good real thick coat and we'll lay the spar cap down. Now this generally goes the whole length of the wing and then uh, tapers off to shorter pieces as the spar cap gets built up. But for our sample here, we'll show it just, uh, just uh, in a smaller piece. And again, we work from the middle out and pulling the fibers very straight. It's very important that the fibers get uh, pulled out straight. 
and we use a uh, shortened version of a squeegee that will fit down into the, into the trough to pull the fiber straight. Notice just a few passes of that squeegee. That's all there is to it. The fibers lay down very nice and straight. Paint on a little bit more uh, epoxy. On top of that, we'll get the next ply down. It's important to squeegee about every two thicknesses of this to get out the excess epoxy. Don't put all of it in and then, and then expect to get out the all the excess <clears throat> all the excess because it may be Im impossible to do so. Now, because the fibers, the bundles are in bigger groups, <clears throat> they'll take longer to wet out. And to assist in wetting out, you can use a small hair dryer if you use caution not to get too much heat on the uh, adjacent foam surfaces. So I'll put in a little bit of heat there. Just warming it up will, will cause the epoxy to become more, uh, more liquid and it will wick into the bundles of uh, unidirectional fiberglass. You can just see it getting wetter. You should work on the spar cap about two plies at a time. Get two plies down, get them wet out perfectly, getting them looking just right with the right resin ratio, right epoxy to resin ratio. And when it looks perfect, then you put on the next two. And sometimes there's buildups as much as uh, 15 or 20 plies, depending on how big the airplane is and how far inboard on the spar cap you are. Good. Still a little dry. A little more heat in there will uh, will allow it to uh, to soak up the epoxy. We've got a little more required here in the corners. Get get a little bit of heat on it. Make sure that it wets out well before you continue with a third and fourth ply. <clears throat> if it's too hot for you to hold your hand under it, it's too hot to be putting it anywhere near the foam. You should be able to put your fingers under it without burning yourself. Okay, now that is wet out well under the uh, glass. So again, I'm painting a liberal coat on the last one and putting the next one on. And again, most important motion with this is a drawing with a squeegee from the center outboard to pull it out. If we walked away and left this for about five minutes, it would probably wet itself completely out because there is enough epoxy there. So you want to use some patience, use a lot of light strokes with the squeegee, always in keeping in mind that your primary job here is to provide adequate wetting without excess epoxy, and keeping the fibers as straight as possible. <clears throat> That's plenty of epoxy. Spend a little bit of time with the squeegee and the hair dryer wetting it out and removing the excess off the ends. If this is done well, the thickness buildup it should be very predictable. It will be very, very close to 25 thousandths of an inch buildup per ply of spar cap. Our next special layup is going to show you the typical corner tape, as it's called, in the corner of a fuselage to bulkhead juncture or any area where a plane comes together, like a side console and so on. We have already removed the peel ply from this edge. We're going to take it off here. We're going to trowel flocks along here, put it together, nail it together, remove the excess flocks, and immediately put in what we call a corner tape. Mike will put the flocks on, and I'll get this peel ply off of here. When you put flocks on, put a liberal amount on. You can always wipe it off. Remember, Phlox was flocked cotton mixed with pure epoxy to a wettish consistency.
put the two pieces together as if you were putting a bulkhead onto the side of the fuselage. Squeeze them together. We're going to use nails to temporarily uh, hold them together here. The nails go down through the foam. Then we come along here and wipe off the excess flux. Now if we were to let this cure at this point in the game, we would have to come down later and sand that edge to, uh, to be able to put the corner tape in. You want to paint that in there, Mike? The corner tape is a bi-directional fiberglass that has 45 degree orientation. I'll, I'll put uh, the orientation on this so that you can see. Half the fibers run this direction, half this direction. Mike has that all wet out. We'll put the corner tape in like this. And there's not too much use for a squeegee in this because it's difficult to get in and squeegee out. And when you squeegee, it tends to pull it away from the corner. So stippling is used almost exclusively here. And we try not to put in too much excess epoxy to start with. And then you will not have uh, uh, the need to use a squeegee to take out the excess. When you're stippling, you don't bang like that with the paintbrush. You put the paintbrush down, and you raise and lower the heel of the brush. This uh, smears the epoxy on and helps drive it down into the fibers to wet it out. You can see that's getting thoroughly wet there. Still dry up here. Now we have another candidate for peel ply on this corner tape, and that is the transition of this rough edge. If the rough edge is not transitioned with peel ply, it'll be susceptible to a delamination. So we put the peel ply down, use a little bit of extra epoxy. In this case, there's enough extra on there to wet it out. And we go back up to this corner. We need a little more on it, probably. It's dry in the middle there. Bring this up. Apart from anything else, the uh, peel ply transition inside of your cockpit, where you're going to be looking at it every time you fly the airplane, makes a really neat uh, finish between the, the, the corner tape, the structural corner tape, and the surface of your of the inside of your cockpit. You can really clean it up and make it look neat. Of course, the peel ply is not left in there. It's removed after, after the cure. The transition uh, peel ply tapes can be removed immediately after cure. It looks good. At the end of each layup session or each day's work, whatever you're doing, you end up with, with cups, several cups, sometimes one or two, sometimes a bunch of them. Like this one where we had dry micro in it. And if you, if you just let that cure the way it is, then you, you, you have to throw the thing away. It's useless to you. If with a little, a little extra work, a few minutes taken at the end of each day, you can save a cup like this. Take your, your uh, popsicle stick, scrape out the excess. And if you have any excess pure epoxy left, like we do here, you can pour it into this cup. You're going to throw it away anyway. Pour it in there. Swirl it around in there and let it set that night to cure. To cure. Leave it sitting flat. It will cure with a flat bottom and smooth, smooth cup, just like this one will. And then you can reuse these cups after a 24-hour cure. Same way with the uh, with, with a flux cup. Take that, throw it away, pour in a little excess pure epoxy and save that cup. You can use these cups over and over again if you do that. You don't have to go through hundreds of them. Now your squeegee is a, is a very important tool and you should really look after it. If you ever let the epoxy that we have on here cure, you've got a problem. The thing becomes as stiff as a board and then you can't use it correctly. So it, after each session, at least, 
or even during the session, take your paper towel and wipe that thing down thoroughly. At the end of the day, it's not a bad idea to dip the paper towel in a little MEK or something, solvent, and wipe that thing off very thoroughly so that it remains pliable and clean with a smooth edge for doing your squeegee work. The scissors, same way. We have uh, epoxy and micro all over our scissors here. And these are expensive tools. And if you take a little time each day to keep them clean, a little MEK on a paper towel, and they'll last the, the length of time it takes you to build the airplane. If you allow it to cure on here, the thing will get to the point where you can hardly even use the scissors. Even with the popsicle sticks, if you scrape them off, you can reuse them. There's no need in throwing away all of this stuff. In fact, they work better the second time. They, they, they don't absorb anything. Reuse your, your, your equipment. As far as your own, your own personal hygiene, now is the time that I just had Plinine on my hands. I never had gloves on. You take them, go inside to the, the sink and wash your hands thoroughly. Every part of you that's had epoxy on you, you need to wash very, very thoroughly. The bird had gloves on his hands. He was smarter than I. And his hands are not even dirty. After a while, you become disciplined in working with these materials. When you first work with them, you may have epoxy on your hands and you'll scratch your ear like this. After you've done several layups, you'll find it's best to scratch your ear like this. And uh, do like this instead of like this. <laughs> it's also a good time now to clean off your workbench because now the epoxy is not hardened yet. And if you wait till the next work session to clean off your workbench, you'll be chipping off hardened epoxy instead of just wiping off uh, epoxy that will come up easy now. Sweep the floor, get it ready for the next work session. When you, a clean shop makes a clean, attractive airplane. A dirty shop generally makes a dirty airplane. Finishing the uh, composite home build airplane is uh, a subject in its entirety that's really beyond the scope of this presentation. Finishing is very important on these airplanes because in the finishing process, the final smoothness of the contour is added to the airfoils. The builder must be very careful that he not damage the structure with the sanding block. The structure must also have a ultraviolet barrier applied so that the sun's rays don't deteriorate the epoxies. And they must be painted white so that their structural uh, temperature stays cool enough for the materials used. The details in the finishing are published and the builder must be careful to follow very closely the finishing requirements. There is a new state of the art, a construction method that is better in many ways. With it, the builder has new dimensions, new capabilities, and his flying takes on new dimensions, and that's what it's all about. Okay, you can start the camera now, we're coming through. Okay, we'll be in and break in about 10 seconds. You ready? Okay, go for it. Okay, camera silence. Very nice. Yeah, that looks good.